And am I starting by reading um, the main statement again? Yes, please read the statement. order at 4.01 p.m. I have an opening statement here. Pursuant to Governor May's March 12, 2020 order, defending the decisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the survey special committee will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the town's website at www.surbridge.gov. Uh, sorry, one second. I just minim accidentally minimized right out of my statement. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to listen and or watch the meeting, either online on the town's on-demand broadcast, on cable television or channel 191, or dial into the meeting at 774-304-1455, enter 428 for the meeting, and 12345 for the act of code. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure public adequately accept the proceedings in real time. In the event that we are unable to do so despite best efforts, we will post of the town's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Oh, and now we have Kerry here as well. Great. All right. So first on the agenda tonight, um, we have the meeting minutes that Mary emailed out. I'm not sure if I have had a chance to review those or if they'd like to take, to take now. I was not included on those emails, so I have yet to see them. Oh, really? I might yeah. have. I, I only got a point from um, Annie. That was the only communication I've gotten about anything going on at the moment. Okay, hold on. See, Mary, if you would be able to forward um, those to Carrie, my this is the first time my computer has frozen during the Yeah, uh, Carrie, I apologize. Um, I'm looking at my sent mail, and um, I'm trying to find them. So I sent them on Friday, right? Yes, I believe it was Friday morning. You're on my carry 129 at AOL. So maybe not, I got wrong. That's not my email address. <laughs> oh my, it's not carry 129 at AOL? No, it's Carrie Lee Quinlan at gmail.com. I wonder who got this. <laughs> okay. I knew I sent it to a carry. Hold on. <laughs> That's strange. Okay, give it to me again. Hey, okay. Wait a minute, We're time out, time out. Wait a minute, this is being broadcast. If you want everybody to have this, that's fine. If not, Carrie, email it to Annie and she'll get it to Mary. It's up to you. Yeah, Annie has We can it. also table, yeah, we can table these meeting um, minutes to review at the next meeting if you would like. Well, up to you. Well, um, let me just interject. Typically, and you don't have to, Carrie, a lot of times right on the Sturbridge website, we have the emails of committee members um, for a lot of our, but Carrie, if you're not comfortable, then then don't do it. Annie, um, do you want me to reset yeah. them to you again? Is that what you're saying? I can forward it right now. Um, my okay. computer came back to life, so I'm in the middle of finding an email and I'm forwarding it right over. Okay. Thank you. It's really not a big deal. I just wanted to be clear that I have not received anything. <laughs> Would the committee want to table these meeting minutes? Sorry, I'm trying to look and talk at the same time. I think if we table them till the end, I'll try and find time between um, chatting. to oh, we move on to the end. Yeah. Okay, Annie, just so you know, any motions or votes, the person making the motion needs to say their name, 
Then the motion, the person making the second needs to say their name and then a roll call vote, please. Okay. I this is Lisa Bowden speaking and I would like to make a motion to table the approval of the minutes until our next meeting so Carrie has time to process them so she could focus on the meeting that we have now. This is Sandra and I second it. Okay. So for all in favor, I will roll call. Um, so we will start with Lisa. Yes. Uh, okay, say yes, in favor or aye. So Lisa, yes. Sandra. Yes. Mary. Yes. And myself, as a committee member, um, yes. And would Terry abstain? Yes. So that passes. Um, and Terry, I just forwarded those over to you, um, but we'll worry about that for this meeting. But you should have them now. Yep, I did get them. Thank you. Great, no problem. All right. Um, so tonight we are meeting to discuss the farmers market proceedings. Um, because they will have to go in front of the Board of Selection, um, and that is scheduled for Monday, May 4th. Um, and the farmer's markets will just start with first and foremost, where it deems essential, and that's why we're moving forward at this time. Um, so what I had emailed out over the weekend was what was provided um, from the farmer's market manager on behalf of the volunteer group of their revised plan to move forward um, to accommodate kind of the state regulations for the um, farmer's market. I'm wondering if everyone has had to review that, so we should open this question. I've had time to review it um, and had put some of it together, so I'm very familiar with it. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, Mary. We're talking about the memo that's prepared for the service board of selectmen. Yes, so we'll talk about the revised plan first, if anyone has questions, and then um, I know, ultimately it's the memo to, to the Board of Selectmen. Right, but is the revised plan the memo that you're giving to the Board? Yes, yep. Okay, I was just not calling it a plan. Yeah, I had a few comments on it. Um, on the bottom of page one, it says that uh, vendors um, we'll be following the guidelines set forth by the Service Board of Health. Um, and then it goes on to have various bullet items of additional um, safeguards, if you will, that the market's going to take. What are, I'd like the Board of Health to put those guidelines in writing. Um, that's what I'm going to request when it goes forward to the Board of Selectmen because we don't even, we don't know what those guidelines are that are going to be followed. So, so that's board. something we can have prepared by the Board of Selectmen meeting. And I okay. did reach out to Ken today. Um, Lisa, I'm not sure if you would know. Um, I didn't have enough time to contact Kate because she's still up. Do you know if the Board of Health distributes guidelines? Um, actually, the um, Department of, let me see, who is this is from? The Department of Public Health just last night came out with a um, list of items, which was very good. Yes. Um, and I just, I just got it today, otherwise I would have sent it to you. Um, but it just came through our listserv today. Um, and it's basically because the guidance that we were given was just that guidance. It wasn't regulations and they were looking to, for every board of health to put something together. And a lot of markets were coming back with the fact that it would be really helpful if the Department of Public Health came up with something, which they just did. So I will forward this to everyone after the meeting today. Um, as I said, I'm sorry I didn't get it to you earlier, but I just found it about an hour ago. I think okay. that's what I was reviewing right before this meeting as well. Okay. okay. But so Mary, we can have Ken's comment and put in writing to the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, and also that's great. And if the um, local Board of Health just wants to incorporate by reference the Department of Public Health guidelines, 
but I still want our local Board of Health um, to put their stamp on it, if you will, with respect to what they would require. Because I, you know, when the Board of Selectmen approves it, we've got to have something from our local Board of Health as well, saying that they are adopting the public, the, the, the State Department of Public Health guidelines. Maybe they're going to impose a few more because you can always be stricter than what the state imposes. But I'm going to want something in writing from the local Board of Health from the agent um, in terms of me voting on Monday. Um, sure. And then I just had a few other um, things with the bullet. Um, bullet number three, it says it will encourage social, they'll um, space the vendors to encourage social distancing. And I really think that should be to require social distancing, not just encourage. Um, that's okay. the third bullet. Um, the fifth bullet, it says vendors must have masks, gloves, and hand washing stations or sanitizer available for employees. I think vendors must use masks and gloves. I'm sure that's probably what we meant, but it's just yep. not the way it reads. So they must use masks and gloves and have washing stations and sanitizer available but they should all be in masks and gloves i think that's required anyway um mm -hmm. and then um moving on it says vendors will be these are just my suggestions so i'm, I'm just i i just have a whole series um vendors will be responsible for enforcing social distancing at their booths Great, I think the responsibility does fall on them at their booths. But then I think we need some kind of a bullet that says farmer, farmer's market volunteers and the marketing manager will enforce social distancing on the common areas because um, we also have to do something like so a group of 15 people don't decide to all meet and socialize together. So I think the social distancing has to happen at more than just the booth. And then I think we need to take responsibility for the, in, the enforcement of the common areas. Um, and then I noticed that um, under the Department of Agriculture guidelines, they have some suggestions that local farmers, managers may impose, but it can differ jurisdiction to jurisdiction. But I like the bullet that says um, farmers, managers may limit the amount of customers that are allowed at any one time into the market. Um, on page two, it says social distancing. Market managers should increase the space between vendors to assist in patron flow and reduce crowding at vendor stations. And then it goes on to say market managers may also consider limiting the number of customers who can enter the market space at one time based on visitation rates. Mm -hmm. um, markets are strongly encouraged to remind customers of social distancing. I mean, I don't think we're going to have to do that, hopefully not right through October, but I think that we need to begin by phasing in. I don't think that we can, I don't think we should encourage, I don't think this will happen anyway, but, you know, 75 people to, to all be there at once, because even the supermarket are putting like a maximum capacity on the amount of customers they let in at any time. Like, I know sometimes Shaw puts it at 90 or whatever. So, I mean, it's just something for us yeah. to think about as a committee. But that's what I'm going to encourage. I'm just trying to be open and honest. What I'm going to encourage on Monday is that the first couple of markets, until we get a sense of the amount of people, that we should um, put some kind of limit on the maximum amount of people on the con. And, um, so, I, in the state guidelines, they've also provided so more information has come out. Um, okay. For example, the from the order of commissioner on public health for farmers market. Um, just an example. Uh, let's see. For guidelines for limiting the amount of people, we're looking at um, no more than ten to fifteen customers per one thousand square feet at any one time. Um, so now that we are getting more guidelines really specific, um, I think that's going to help the farmer's market manager and the um, volunteer group to regulate down there. Um, but just so you are aware, Mary, and I will share all of this um, out to the committee and the Board of Flexmen will have it, 
um, many more regulations will say have come into play um, in the past week for farmers markets, and I think they're going to answer a lot of your questions and or concerns. Okay, awesome. That makes sense that they're li they're li they will limit the amount depending upon the space that's available. Um, so this kind of gets into my next thing, but um, it's going to be a little, in the past we've encouraged that sense of community to just go to the market and hang out and be a part of it. And I think now the market, at least for the first month or so, is going to take on a very different kind of feel. I think people should basically go, um, we're using it right as a substitute for going to the supermarket so that they're able to get fresh produce, um, we're able to support the farmers, I get all that, but it shouldn't be a place where we are hanging out. It should be just like the market where we go, we, we get what we need, our fruits, our vegetables, our bread, our meat, and then leave. So. Um, I don't think we can enforce this by any means, but I think there should be a sense that we encourage families to, you know, um, like they do in the supermarkets. If you go in some of them, they say, please send one member of your family rather than everybody to the grocery store. So, you know, instead of a family of five going, needing another family of five, maybe, you know, one person goes or two people go, instead of making it a family event, because then we're going to get into having too many people at the common at once and we won't be able to accommodate a lot of customers because like one or two or three families will have so many people there so i think we should encourage that um and um let's see and then just a few things um i know we get into how it has to be market by market in this memo it says some have full-time employees others such as ours are 100 percent volunteer we need to add something with the exception of the market manager who is paid a stipend because now we're not 100% volunteer. We do have a market manager that we're paying. So I think that, you know, we do need to at least add that we're not 100% volunteers. We could say primarily volunteers, but we, we are paying a stipend now. Um, and then I think that we should encourage the use of math um, by the patrons as well. So, um, you know, I know a lot of people are doing it anyway, but I think that it should be a bullet where we at least encourage it. I know that would be very difficult to enforce, but um, I think that's something we need to think about. And then just my last thing, but some of this is going to be answered based on the regulations of how many customers you can have for square footage. So I don't know what the square footage is of our common. I just know it's a pretty small common. 20 vendors, when I first looked at this, kind of seemed like a lot to me. I don't know if that everybody, with the exception of those that weren't going to sell um, things that you consume, I know that we got rid of 50% of our vendors, which I'm assuming were crafts and, and the other aspects of the farmer's market. But if we have 20 vendors with two people at each booth, we, we already have 40 people and that's not even counting any of our customers. So I don't know. I have, I didn't know what the farmers market volunteers did to arrive at 20 as being a, a reasonable number. If anybody actually like looked at the common and, and saw what kind of distance we need between booths, but 40 people sounded like a lot to me. So um, as Andy said, some of this might be addressed when the um, regulations come out. But those were just a few of my concerns on the memo. And Lisa, what? Okay. Okay, I'm <laughs> Jeff. Um, I certainly understand the need to re limit the number of people, but how do you do that on such an open space? I, I agree. Lisa, it's, do you know if it's the 20 that discuss it more? I can't. We can't, yeah, hear, you. can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yep. Oh, sorry. It chimed in to say my entry wasn't valid. Um, Lisa, do you know if it's the 20 vendors are expected to be there every week? Or yeah. the 20 vendors in rotation? No, we're looking at having 20 vendors every week 
and we did cut out, as you said, Mary, all the artisans and um, when I say prepared foods, I mean the foods that we were um, looking for last year for people to eat on the common because, of course, our focus has changed. We don't want people to congregate on the common. Um, as far as the spacing, we have um, a drawing with all the dimensions. Um, we were just able to get that today um, because most of, well, all of the volunteers actually are still working. So um, we did get that drawing and two of the volunteers are working on putting together the spacing. Um, and again, with the guidance that just came out today, um, we'll be sure to integrate that into our plan. I did go by the Brimfield Market on Saturday um, and met with the executive director of Hitchcock, who has given me some resources to get some signs made um, to put at each booth to show where the six-foot distance is. Um, I got some ideas for um, kind of taping things off using caution tape. Um, and most of the things you brought up, Mary, we have worked into our plan. Um, but again, I want to review them again now that we have this guidance that we have been for from the um, Department of Public Health to make sure we're putting in everything that they're asking for. If I may. Yeah. Yeah, and that's great. But my question was, how do you limit the people? that are going to be on the common at one time. It's an open space. And people will park and yeah, walk well, from everywhere. Oh, I, I, don't, I agree with you. I don't know that we can do that. Right. Um, but in terms of how many people at a booth, um, I haven't had time. You know, I worked all day today, too. I haven't had time to go through this 100%. Um, but the, the, the guidance they're giving us is to mark it off so we can't have more than 15 customers per 1,000 square feet at any time. Um, I am on a number of listservs, and people are giving their best practices, and I'm looking at that in the evenings and trying to find the best ways to do that. So I don't have an exact answer for you, Jeff, um, but we're working on to see what we can do. Okay. I have some thoughts. Great. Um, Go ahead. So around what Jeff's question was, just something that I'm thinking about, and I don't know how feasible this is, but um, possibly looking at a way to create a kind of single entrance and not like a narrow one, but one way that people could enter into the common and they'd maybe exit from a different way or something like that. But and maybe there's a market uh, volunteer who kind of just keeps a tally of the number of people that are entering and exiting so you can make sure that you're kind of keeping track of that. And I don't know, it could be something like setting up posts and caution tape around the common to discourage people from entering from any one area. So they have maybe a couple different ways to uh, come in and go out. So that's just one thought that I had there. Um, and then a couple other thoughts in terms of the plan and kind of ties into what Mary was saying. Um, I am glad to hear that you said that you were looking into signage, Lisa, because I think that is important. And I think it's probably also important to keep um, some other high level messaging about um, social distancing and board of health best practices. So I don't know if we could look into investing into some sandwich board signs that we could put in, maybe they put them in those kind of intro, those egress places for the market that tell people, you know, this is what we're doing and this is how we're trying to keep you safe and keep our vendors safe, just to let everyone know that we're putting all these kind of measures in place and it'll help keep it at the top of their mind while they're interacting with the vendors. Um, and then as part of that, um, in this plan, the plan looks really thorough. And I agree with a lot of what Mary has said in terms of her updates. But one thing I think that seems to be missing is the messaging and how are you going to communicate to the community all these changes that are going to happen. Um, I think there needs to be something about how messaging on the website, whether it's through emails also, social media, whatever it might be, um, you need to make sure that that's included in the plan uh, because I think it's important for people to know what they're uh, 
going to be experiencing before they get there. Um, that's been something that I know personally I've relied upon for a lot of the interactions that I would be having. I have not physically been in a store in six weeks. Um, I've been, you know, using delivery services and everything else I can to just try and do my part to stay home as much as possible. Um, so I keep looking at, you know, the different options that places are offering, um, in terms of ways that you can engage with them and still participate in the farmer's market would be key. Um, and then as part of that, I also wonder if maybe it's worth looking into some, some kind of delivery method where um, people could buy from a couple of the vendors and, and someone could put together a package and it would be delivered to the person in, within maybe just within the Sturbridge community or something like that. So it opens the door for people who might be high risk and who are concerned about leaving their house and relying more heavily on delivery services. Um, and then it helps them also kind of stay um, engaged and, and be able to use the services, the essential services of the farmer's market. So those are just a few of my thoughts. I don't know how long, obviously none of us know how long any of this is going to happen for, um, but if it goes through the summer, I think maybe talking about a delivery service or starting to look at ways that we could support those people in the community who don't want to put themselves at risk and and go out um, into a community space like that. Yeah, I actually think the delivery would be a great idea if this continues to extend. I would maybe be hesitant to introduce it at first because there's going to be a lot of changes. Um, but that, and I wonder, and this is just thinking out loud, but maybe that's something we could partner with the senior center and schedule ahead of time. Um, so again, if this goes long term, just something else to add um, that came that's new with the guidelines. Um, from the Order and Commissioner of Public Health. They've asked um, for market managers to do kind of the best that they can at allowing a clear entry and exit point, um, as well as the signage around. Um, so everyone's concerned. It's nice to see that I think um, each town is sharing the same concern, and that's already in our guidelines to be you know, updated with um, the kind of our revised plan. And as we're talking, I'm kind of going back and forth to see, you know, what's come out in the past week. And most of the concerns are addressed right in here, which is nice. Question? Yes. Go ahead, Mary. No, no, because maybe, maybe my question is your question. So well, you go uh, first. Go I ahead. Doubt it. When did you want to start? We were anticipating starting on June 7th as we originally planned. Um, obviously, we're waiting to hear if we're going to be allowed to go forward, um, but we're talking with our farmers to see if they're going to be ready as planned. The winter's been good, so we're hoping they're ready to get going then. Um, and addressing some of what Carrie asked and about the tape around the common, that was something I had thought about, an in and an out, but in order to do that, we would obviously need um, some more access to the common, maybe setting it up. And on if the common isn't going to be used for anything else, if we could set it up the day before, uh, because that's going to take a lot of um, work to set something like that up. The other thing that concerns me about that is, so if you're only going to let a certain amount of people in, where are they congregating while they wait in line? I mean, ideally, they're waiting in their cars, or if they walked over, we can keep them apart. But we don't have, it, it's going to be impossible for the volunteers to keep them from congregating in any area, whether it be across the street or whatever, until their time comes to be let in. So those are things mm -hmm. that we need to hash out as a committee, or as, I'm sorry, a group of volunteers. I believe. Yeah, I Every time my chat uses words, it's freezing. Um, Lisa, I believe they gave us guidelines um, on what to do for those who are waiting in line. I'm trying to pull that back up to read it to the committee, um, and now I'm not able to. And I want to say the suggestion was six feet apart and a regulated line. Um, and I yeah. don't know if that's something we would want to circle. I, I don't see an easy way to do it. I agree with your concerns. I don't know if it's something we really want to line people up and send them up to cut through over to town hall. I don't, I don't see the easiest way to do that either. We're really the safest. 
Right, and that's what I'm saying. Some towns are doing it there. I know Somerville is, they got a chalk artist in that's drawing lines and doing all that. A lot of farmers markets also take place on pavement. So, you know, they can draw um, mm. what to do. We don't have, um, honestly, we don't have enough volunteers to go out and, and do all that. So we would be looking at the town for more support um, if you wanted something that structured. That, that's my concern. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying with um, the small number of volunteers that we have, um, and not every volunteer is, is signed up for every weekend, that would be hard for just two people to manage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, can I? Yep, I totally understand how difficult, that's probably gonna be the hardest part of the farmer's market. But at the same time, that's probably the most critical part of the farmer's market in order to get approval, at least from my perspective. Um, and it is going to be a big challenge, but now we know about these guidelines that are requiring it. And also, even before that, the Department of Agriculture, where they said it's an essential business, but farmers, you know, managers may want to think about limiting customers. So. It's not something that we are creating. I mean, they're envisioning this. So there's got to be some kind of, of a way to, to do that. Um, because otherwise, we, we just, I, I personally would not feel comfortable if we did have a big crowd on, on the common. I, I, would not, I would not be comfortable with that. That's one of the reasons. No, I'm not saying you would be, Lisa. And I know it's going to be hard trying to figure out a way to get everybody in and not mm -hmm. to hang out, so maybe the guidelines will help us. I think waiting in a car is not a bad possibility. I mean, you know, because most people are not walking to the common, and people don't live around the common. Um, and so, you know, we very nicely say, you know, it's full right now, and maybe we don't have, you know, like a 50, you know, maybe we have a range. We wanna have anywhere from 30 to 50 people. We don't have to have an exact number, but we also can't have a situation where people are just going to hang out because we we closed our park, our um, you know recreation, closed the playground, and I don't want a situation where this just becomes now the replacement and people are going and they're so happy to be out that they're hanging around the common waiting. So we are going to, from my perspective, to get support. Um, we're going to have to try to figure out a way where we are able to honor those guidelines and limit the amount of customers. That's one of the reasons I thought 20 vendors for the first couple of weeks till we get a handle on it was kind of a lot. Um, but um, I don't know. Well, honest, we just received these guidelines. We're, we're good on Thursday night, and look how we can incorporate these in. And if we find that we can't, I'd be surprised uh, because we've been very creative and there's so many markets out there. Like I said, they're not cookie cutter, um, but there are markets out there that are doing it. I was very impressed with what I saw at Brimfield the other day. And honestly, with the, the way we're planning on putting this forward, we've already talked to a lot of our vendors about uh, the orders and a lot of them are already set up to do that. So you would have patrons pre-ordering, paying before they got there, and just picking up their items. But what we're going to incorporate into that is trying to space out the time they pick them up as well. So we don't have them all showing up at 9 o'clock. Um, so the vendors can then space them out. Um, and we as well, yes, yeah, certainly we haven't started any kind of campaign because we don't even know if we can go forward yet. But when we do, we will be on our Facebook page and on our web page explaining to people, as I did in um, what I wrote up for you in the Board of Selectmen, that this is not going to be the market that we worked so hard to uh, put together these years, which was to encourage community and encourage people to hang out. Um, we're prepared to pivot because this is a very fluid situation and it will change and we will change our market as we need to change it. Um, but I would just hope you would give us, as a committee, since we just got these guidelines today while we were all working, um, a, a couple of days to uh, put something together for you where we can map it all out um, more succinctly on how we go 
going to abide by all of these? I would just say um, in terms of the pickup stuff where you were mentioning that the vendors would be handling the, the pickups for um, people prepaying or placing orders, um, it might make sense for them to coordinate with the other vendors because there could be people who are ordering from multiple vendors and might choose, you know, they might get different pickup times. And then if they're coordinating together, they can kind of limit the number of pickups that are happening in a certain window. Um, so yeah. just making sure that they're coordinating in that way. I have a question. I, I agree, Carrie. A very good point. Um, did the um, volunteers consider what the supermarkets are doing and having a set time period for the seniors and those that are more vulnerable um, to go so that perhaps the first hour of the market, and this would be very good, um, as Carrie always likes to point out, like from getting the message out, communication, but. Mm -hmm. Not strictly enforcing it, but encouraging maybe the first hour or the last hour or some um, where it's just 65 and older, or if you consider yourself um, more vulnerable because of your condition. And then that in and of itself would kind of limit the amount of people in that first hour. Um, we did talk about that. We actually talked about that with um, the board, our Board of Health agents, Ken. And as he pointed out, you look at the hours of grocery stores open and they're allotting that first hour to shoppers. We're only open four hours. So if you did it on a percentage wise of the time you're open, it wouldn't be a very big window. And he actually didn't recommend it. He said, I don't know that it would be um, that great a benefit. Um, and it would just compress the time that everyone else could be there. Do you think it makes sense in this in these circumstances to extend the farmers market an additional hour in the afternoon, and that way there's more time for people to plan to stagger, so they're not trying to all get there within that that smaller window? I don't know if that's even a possibility or if it'd be too much work, but I, I think it would be uh, uh, certainly a bigger commitment for everyone involved. Um, funny, what we were hearing what came up first was should we shorten the hours, and I was against that because I feel that we do need plenty of time for everyone to come. But when we look at our numbers from last year, and I don't have them all in front of me, um, but it, you know, we were at peak times, you know, maybe a hundred people. And that was like peak, peak times. Most times mm -hmm. we had about 50 people. We're expecting to have a 50% cut in our participation just because of all the things that we are cutting, you know, the old coots table, the, the, all, the, all the different things that we're encouraging people to come, we're cutting most of those. So I don't see more than 25 people there at a time. That's what, when we look at the numbers and how it plays out, that's what we're thinking. None of us have a crystal ball. Um, when I went to Brimfield yesterday, I'm sorry, Saturday, there were four people there, but yet um, they had been consistently people just coming and going and they weren't having any problems with overcrowding. Um, but we, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen, but as I said, we are prepared to pivot. I think it's uh, something that we also need to consider as the weather gets nicer. People are going to want to be outside more, too. So um, yeah. that could change things, too. That could change people be, to be more willing to go out, and we might see more crowds. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of areas. I think that Jeff, um, go ahead. I think we have some time no, just, to uh, figure this out. So right. I get it. This is probably the biggest sticking point is how we manage the crowd. Um, but otherwise, I think you're on the right path with limiting the vendors and, you know, just leaving it to produce and natural products. Again, we're looking at a supplement to the grocery store experience rather than you know, a social interaction. I think that's the, the focus of all this, and it should be. But uh, we can figure out how to manage the crowd, I think. We'll work that. You know, there's got to be a way to work that out. I think, yeah, and I think perhaps you might want to, um, it's hard. Like, you know, I have my comments on this memo. I'm not really willing, as it's written here, to, like, vote for it because I think it needs to be amended you know, to reflect some of the things that I said, that they have to wear masks and 
um, limiting the amount of customers. Like, this is a great first draft, but now that we have guidelines, um, this doesn't talk at all about limiting customers, and I think that's a, a critical component. So what I'm just wondering is um, maybe we can just give our um, support for the farmer's market going forward, pending knowing the details and logistics of how we're going to honor the guidelines and limit the amount of customers and ha have a more final draft um, that we actually vote on, which takes into account the latest guidelines that you have. Um, I definitely think it's worth going to the selectmen on Monday, but you may find that you go back to the selectmen with the final version after you get their feedback and after you have the drawings and you've incorporated the guidelines from the state. Um, I, I think that it might require more than one meeting, which I think we still have the time because we're still at the end of April. Uh, but I think it's kind of premature to like move forward with this particular memo just because it's not doing some of the things that we want it to do, um, like limit the crowd, uh, which is to me is the big is the big thing. Um, but I certainly support having a farmer's market. I think it's a nice alternative for people to have fresh produce rather than going to the supermarket, and it takes the stress off the supermarket. Um, so I still, and I wouldn't, you know, this wouldn't be a stickler for me, but I guess I respectfully disagree with the health agent in terms of not seeing a big benefit of at least having a small time period where the seniors can go and the vulnerable people. I think that's why the supermarkets did it. I actually think that's a good thing uh, because certainly I would not encourage, right now until we have other things in place, I wouldn't encourage somebody in their 80s with existing conditions to, to just go anytime to the market. I wouldn't encourage them to go to the supermarket either right now, but it would have been nice to have, um, from my end, a small window where they might feel like they can go with fewer people. But um, that's, then again, you know, that's just one view. I, I get that it might crowd things the other hours, but if you're open for four hours and you have a half an hour at the beginning for seniors, I don't see where that adversely impacts your regular crowd. I really don't. But um, And then I just want to talk about one other thing. I know it's been kind of... I know we're all out of sorts um, with our meetings because number one, you know, we're facing this pandemic and everything's virtual. And number two, we don't have Kevin Silchak anymore and he was kind of the staff liaison. Annie really is a, a voting member as opposed to being the one that does the legwork. But I just wanted to say that um, I think it's important that we go through the special events committee first with the farmers market before they just move forward to the board of selectmen because um i for one would have been caught off guard if we didn't have this meeting first and if any of the other board members said well what does the special events committee think and then we hadn't had a meeting to say what we felt about the farmers market and again i realize everything's out of sorts we don't have kevin we're meeting virtually but um it would be no problem if the farmer's market, and I know we didn't go this route, but if the farmer's market was a town committee where they abided by open meeting law, et cetera, et cetera, which I know the volunteers don't want to do because it would cripple you, um, you, could, you could have gone forward directly, but since you know, a group of volunteers under, our, under this committee, I think it's important that like this committee is the one that um, goes forward with with these ideas otherwise we're really not the ones calling the shots and then the farmers market really does have to become a town committee so um you know like going forward to the board of selectmen without having had a, an SEC meeting I, I don't think um would have been a good approach uh, but again i know things are different because we don't we don't have that liaison but it was my understanding that we're supposed to do the approving of the vendors and, and et cetera. Um, so even if it was just the farmer's market manager, like she was going to be the liaison, even if she just, you know, said, hey, you know, special events committee, this is what I'm prepared, planning to do. 
do you want to meet? Do you want to recommend this? Do you not? Because, um, again, I think I would have been caught off guard if, if any selectman said, what a special event thing. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Um, it's definitely hard without a staff person. Seeing as we had already approved it and it was deemed essential, um, that's why we would have moved forward because it was already, we don't really have much of an argument to not support it being deemed essential. But I understand your point. Um, I mean, doing my best over here. <laughs> Balancing oh, no, a lot. it's not you, Annie. I understand. It's because we didn't have Kevin and everything, and you were very good about volunteering to do it. Um, so I'm just saying, it, it, it just going forward, also to protect yeah. the farmer's market volunteers, because if they start acting like the committee independently going forward, then board members are going to say, well, why aren't they a, a committee? You know, so I'm just, I just wanted to put it yeah. out there. Okay. Mary, we were, we were told that Annie had been appointed as the interim liaison. And no, no, no. That was, and I, I tried to check this before. I'm just volunteering, volunteering myself. <laughs> There's no official, so official appointment. The miss so there would have been no communication. That's the hard part. And that's what I had reached out to Caitlin about uh, because we are going to have a, a gap of staff. But every I time I put that in writing, that I'm volunteering myself to assist because I don't know if um, the farmers market would have even found out that they had to go to the board of selectmen or even had an option. So I've been trying to really oh, monitor I've, this for the past month or so. We certainly appreciate it, Annie. It was just we thought we were following proper protocol. Um, and apologies that there was just a breakdown in communication. No, and once we have a coordinator, it, it, these kind of issues, I think, will go away, too. Um, and like I said, I do support, I do know some people have canceled their markets, though, um, because of the concern for social distancing. So even though it's essential, it's not the kind of thing that has to go forward, either. I mean, I want it to. I think it's a good thing. But, it's a um, community. It does, but it's going, it, it, uh, it absolutely does, but it, again, I... I I really want to limit the amount of people because I, I would not feel comfortable um, opening up, having a crowded common. I, I, I don't think that would be a good but None of us yeah. would. Okay. So for tonight, I'm wondering the best way to, war, to word our support of the farmer's market um, moving forward with the request the Board of Selectmen. Um, but I'm trying to think of how we can word it to include um, the revisions that are to come with the additional guidelines that we've gotten. If anyone has any suggestions here. There is a, it's not exactly answering your question, Annie, but um, more of answering um, concerns. It's Tuesday, I believe by the, by the time we're meeting with the Board of Selectmen that we will have a more concise plan to present. Um, as I said, we just got this today. It's something we've been waiting for. Um, but we will work together to get something more concise to present to the Board of Selectmen. Because although it's only April now, May 4th is Monday, market's only a month after that, and we really owe it to our vendors to let them know whether we're going to be able to move forward or not. This is their livelihood. Do we want to have another meeting where we're able to look at what changes you make? Or, I mean, here's the thing. You can, you know, you can present something from the market volunteers if you want. I mean, th there's nothing wrong with doing that because you all all have agreed. Or we could have another meeting where we look at it. It's just that the way this is drafted is it's coming from the farmer's market and it's coming from the special events committee. And um, I'm not ready to like vote for the changes until I actually know what we're going to do. You know, I mean, I'll vote in favor of having the farmer's market, but in terms of this memo coming from both of us, we're not going to have another chance to look at all these revisions that the farmer's market volunteers are going to make. So I don't know if it's better if it just comes from them, from you, um, the volunteers, or if we have another meeting to look at your final memo to the board, if you want us to sign it or. Okay, how about, um, obviously we are going to abide by these guidelines put forth by the Department of Public Health. Um, 
if we forward you these and that will be the attachment to um, the draft we gave you and that we will abide by these guidelines set forth by the Department of Public Health. I, I think you'll be pretty um, pleased with all the guidelines they've put out. With They're addressing all the things that you're talking about. Um, and I can send it out right after this meeting. I can send it to everybody. I don't want to be able to talk to other people. How do you feel about that, Mary? If it was to be the letter with the um, guidelines. Danny, we can't understand you. I don't think she heard you. Let's try this again. That's better. I don't know what's going on here. Sorry. I can hear you. But can Mary hear you? I can hear you now. I couldn't hear you before. You were in and out. How do you feel about Lisa's suggestion um, that if our um, request was to be the revised plan in the addition to the guidelines? I think there were uh, yeah, two different memos. That's, that's probably that. the biggest thing. Um, but again, um, I really have, we have to see the guidelines because I'm not sure. We can handle 20 vendors times two, that's 40 people right off the bat. That was one of my concerns is the amount of vendors um, that we're gonna allow each week and we're at 20, mm -hmm. that's 40 people. I, I, don't, I don't know what they say, that they're limiting the amount per square foot. Um, but that's, I can't, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Lisa. That's of patrons, customers. They don't have any requirements on the amount of vendors? Not that I have seen yet. Not that I have seen. Another possibility that we could do, um, what if we voted to support the farmer's market moving forward and then the request came from the farmer's market manager? But I don't know, I don't want to, I want to make sure we're following protocol. Um, but I understand Mary's concern of getting all the guidelines merged together. Um, but it's, it's also hard and it's poor timing for them to come out right before this meeting and they're really all going to be merged into the same document. Right. I think just like we put off the meeting minutes for Terry, I'm just not comfortable with the memo when we're going to be changing it. Like, I, I'll support the farmer's market, but I think all the details and everything, if the farmer's market volunteers is going to have another meeting, then they can, they can, you know, uh, revive, uh, they can create a document of what they're going to do, and I'll look at it on Monday. Because again, I still wanted some of the changes, like the farmers market volunteers and the market manager will enforce social distancing um, on the common areas, um, requiring the use of. I had like a whole bunch of things that I don't think you're going to end up getting all of them in this memo. No, that's why I'm other people feel about it. It's that, hard to agree to something that we haven't seen. It's, you know. Right, and that's why I'm saying. It's kind of being rushed into it because you're meeting on Monday with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, I'm a lot more comfortable. But we can vote. If other people want to vote for it, they can. I'm just not going to vote for it because there's some changes that I want to see. Uh, but I will support the farmer's market pending um, a more detailed presentation by the volunteers as to how we're going to um, enforce the guidelines by the public health, subject to seeing whatever guidelines the local Board of Health, I think they should be required to put something in writing before the Board of Selectmen. I don't think it's fair not to have anything in writing. Um, and subject to seeing how all the tables are going to be laid out. Maybe when I see it, it'll be very obvious that 20 vendors we can easily accommodate on the common. I'm just saying when I looked at that, that looked like a lot of vendors um, with social distancing to me. 
But again, when you, Lisa, when you show me the, the plan, I may not have that concern anymore. You know, but yeah, it's I, hard to agree to something when we don't have it in front of us. <laughs> it's not your fault. The guidelines just came out. Um, Well, if you want any, I, I will make a motion to accept um, the Sturbridge Farmers Market going forward on June 7th, given um, they follow the orders of the Commissioner of Public Health for Farmers Market. Okay. Do we have a second? I'll second it, Sandra. Lisa, and I will roll call. Oh, Wait a minute. Is this, do we have discussion? Yeah, I just want to ask the hours. Are they still nine to one? That's the plan. Okay, good. And um, subject to what? So that's all you're going to do is like, what about subject to this? Is, social distancing and, and all the other things we talked about today. That's all in the guideline. Oh, Lisa lost us. <laughs> One second there. Mary, um, that's all in the guidelines that Lisa this did refer to. Please. Okay, but well, oh, we have her back. The farmer's market volunteers and the market manager needing to enforce social distancing in the common areas, encouraging, like, I don't know if that's in, well, I don't have the guidelines in front of me, so I don't know if all the guidelines are addressing all the concerns that we have. We don't have the guidelines, you know? I think at this point, I'll probably abstain because I want to see what's in the guidelines and if it addressed all my concerns. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, sorry, I lost the call. Mary, you can continue. So, we'll abstain when we do the um, vote. I think I think just because I want to um, see the guidelines and make sure that all my concerns with this memo are addressed in the guidelines, and I don't, because I, I don't have them, I don't know if they are. Um, yeah. And yeah. Probably by Monday night, things will be addressed. But I am going to be looking for the. I don't think it's enough that we just leave it up to the vendors to enforce social distancing at their booth. There's got to be something that puts some kind of responsibility on the on the farmers market and the market manager and the town because we're we're the ones who are putting this on that we will also enforce social distancing. Mm -hmm. So we. Um, if, if I could, I, I'm just curious because I lost audio for everything. Um, I know I had made a motion, Sandra had seconded it and then asked the time of the market, but I didn't hear what took place after that. Did the vote continue we or not? Still, we are still in discussion and Mary okay. is voicing her concerns um, and reasons for abstaining, but we haven't finished the motion yet. We still need to okay. vote. Okay, thank you. Um, but I'm not sure if there's any other discussion. Okay, um, so we'll do all sorry. our, oh, sorry. Um, to address Mary's concerns and continue to try and move forward with this, could we put um, an amendment on the motion that uh, it would address that we would use the guidelines provided and any additional amendments after the fact, like we could meet again after the Board of Selectmen meeting to go over this stuff and then we have the chance to add things to it. And that way it would address your concerns, Mary. So, we're, so it's not whatever's going before the Board of Selectmen is here's the initial proposal and we'll have room to fine tune it with the SEC. I'd be a lot more comfortable with that. I think that's great and that's kind of what we we're trying to say in the document where we said we're willing and able to pivot as necessary. 
So yeah, I think it's great. Okay. Like, I would then I will vote and you know subject to as Carrie said additional um, safeguards that are put in place either by the SEC suggestion of the volunteers or the board of selectmen after meeting on Monday because they we're going to have input on Monday as well. I mean I don't and I'm thinking that all of us Monday will say when we look at the guidelines and this and the and the way it's drawn out we may have additional safeguards that we want to have to see before we give our blessing, you know. Now, should we string together Lisa's motion and Carrie's amendment? <laughs> so it's clear for everyone. Um, Lisa, will you make your, let's sure. try this again. Will I you make, make your motion? That the Sturbridge Events Committee approve the Sturbridge Farmers Market moving forward with opening on June 7th, following the orders of the Commission Commissioner of Public Health for Farmers Market, knowing that we will be able to make these more stringent if the situation demands. Can we say with the amended, with the input of the Board of Selectmen and the SEC to come? Sure, with the, with the right, all parties doing with that, absolutely. Well, with input of the SEC and DOS um, as, as they deem appropriate. So let me, uh, I have to do the meeting minutes, so let me let me read it back. Um, you're making a motion that the special events committee approve the Sturbridge Farmers Market moving forward with an opening date of June 7th, subject to following the orders of the Commissioner of Public Health guidelines for farmers markets. Yep. Um, can I add our local Board of Health guidelines? I mean, it might be the same, but they might be different. Sure. Okay. Our local Board of Health guidelines, making the requirements for the market more stringent if the situation so requires, and with the input of the Special Events Committee and Board of Selectmen as they deem appropriate moving forward. Is that acceptable? Lisa, is that acceptable wording for the motion? I believe so. Okay. I don't want to, because it's your motion, I don't want to tell you what this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we don't want something where different people are going to come in on the day of the event and say, you need to change this and you need to change that. It's obviously, um, all those guidances will be done in proper, the proper manner. Yeah, but here's the thing. I mean, I think it's one of those things because it is a fluid situation, it may very well happen that way. In other words, if we have the first one on June 7th and there are certain things that we need to address or things that we hadn't thought of, oh, look, we didn't know this was going to happen. The oh, absolutely. And I, I, I'm sorry, Mary. I, I phrased that wrong. Okay. I phrased that wrong. I just... I just want to be clear. We're all on the same page. We all want to do the right thing. Um, so yes, I think the way you worded it is fine. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I get it too. I mean, to the 11th hour, you don't want a lot of changes, but if they're necessary, because I think it's going to be if necessary. Absolutely. It's, it's, going to be one of, it's going to be one of those things, you know, maybe we find at that very first farmer's market, nobody is comfortable going yet. I mean, we have, we're not even on the decline yet. And all this worry about having too many people, it won't even come to fruition. Sure. Or people might do what Carrie was suggesting when it's so beautiful out, the very first event some of the town is having, we might see people flock there and then we're gonna to have to address that too. So it's gonna to have to be a little bit play it by ear, I think. Oh, absolutely. And certainly looking for the support of, of everyone. We want everyone to be on board. Okay. Um, Sandra, are you going to second that motion as amended? Yes, I am. Okay. I second it. Do we have any discussion? 
further discussion? Okay, so we'll do all in favor and I will roll call. Um, so we'll start with Lisa. Yay. Terry? Yes. Sandra? Yes. Mary? Mary, yes. Um, and myself, Annie? Yes. Yeah. So the vote passes. Um, so now my question in terms um, of what we are submitting to Board of Selectmen, because I want to make sure we're on the same page. Um, so moving forward, are we submitting the document that was sent out with email, or should I only send the current revised plan? And at the top, I can say um, with the revisions to come, and by Monday, we'll probably have everything prepared from farmer's market. Um, I'm just thinking in terms of, I know Andrea is working to organize the packet too. Um, so I want to make sure that we have something in there for the board. Um, I'll go. I think whatever packet, to be honest, um, it should really be coming from the farmer's market volunteers. We're not drafting it and we're not going to have another meeting to approve yeah. it. Yeah. So I can't like vote, I can't put my name on a memo that I'm going to see for the first time at the meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, that's what I was under the impression. I just want to double check that now we'll have our market manager. I already have the letter submitted from her. We'll have that almost as a placeholder and we have um, more of a revised one at the end of the week. But that's fine. I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, because this way here, and I'll just say that the SEC you know, they got the guidelines at the last minute. We definitely support the market subject to everything, but the actual logistics did not come from us, which is accurate. It's, it's coming from yep. those volunteers. Now, when would we like to, again, um, to discuss this after the document and any additional guidelines might have come out? I'm going to pull out my calendar. So the Board of Selectmen will be meeting um, this of Monday, May 4th. Um, and I would probably give that week to the market to either recoup, um, answer any questions, or prepare. So we could meet next week, depending on how you guys feel. I was um, thinking maybe give them a week. I think I reading the following Any questions? Week. I think the yeah. following week is better. Sure. I mean, isn't that, is that better for you, Annie? Either, yeah, either way, anything is um, fine for me. I'm just not sure. Um, I want to make sure everyone is on the same page here. I can't tell the urgency. So if we want to do the 11th or 12th for a recap, that's fine. Is that good? Does that give you enough time, Lisa, with the farmer's market people? Well, obviously I'll have to check with Caitlin, but I do you want to make it do you want to make it the week after that? No, no, no. Let's go with the 12th. The 12th is what you were presenting, correct? Okay. Alisa, did you ask something? No, I, I just was saying I, the 12th is fine. Okay. Um, I know 4 o'clock is hard. On Tuesdays, planning quite often at 6.30, and that's why we were scheduled early. Um, I don't have the schedule in front of me. I'm not sure if planning would be meeting that night. Is 4 o'clock okay to schedule again, or is that um, hard for everyone to commit to? It's fine with me. Okay for me, but I do know that Caitlin, the market manager, um, 5 o'clock would be better for her. She often works till 4.30 or 5. And okay. if you want to speak... Um, yeah, I, think, I think it's would the 12th at, I think it's useful to have her so we don't put Lisa and Sandra in a position where they're kind of being the market manager, if you will. You know, I mean, it, I think it'd be useful yeah. to have her. Caitlin was going to be on today's call, but wasn't able to because of work. Um, so I, what I would be asking is to double check um, because I'm not sure of when the planning meetings fall. I think it's every other Tuesday. So I'll confirm that we can do a 5 or 5.30. Um, if we can't, 
what if we try for the Wednesday the 13th, if that time frame works better out of five or six o'clock? Um, I have school committee on Wednesday. Um, it's, um, hi guys, it's Kate and I was able to jump on. Um, I don't know oh, if you hello. Hear me. Hi, hi. Um, I came on right when you guys were voting and it, so I didn't want to interrupt, but um, Tuesdays, I don't get out of work until around five. So if you can do it at five, I can definitely be there on the 12th. I am pulling up the town calendar right now just to see what planning schedule is. Um, we share the phone line. That's the concern here. Gotcha. So May 12th, they do have a planning board meeting scheduled at 6.30. Um, I don't, I'm hesitant to squeeze this in first in case we do have discussion. We would have to stop the meeting. What about um, Monday? Do you, have, do you have rep on Monday, Annie? There's a board of health meeting scheduled at 6 p.m. I am not sure if they share the phone line or not. That Hello, is something Thursday. I would have to double check. They do. Thursday, May 14th. Okay. okay. Thursday, May 14th. We have finance at 6 30 p.m. So the only day that we that there is not a nighttime meeting schedule is Wednesday. Um, but Lisa didn't have that available. I do have to say the following week, the um, there's 6 30 or 6 p.m. Um, meeting. Annie? Annie, yeah. if I could interrupt, if we could ask Caitlin, um, I know you, Tuesdays you work till five. Are you out at four on Monday? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so perhaps we could do the Monday. That's okay. Yep, I'll just, I would just be maybe like five or 10 minutes late and I can always jump on in the car. Oh, we can schedule it before 15. Sure. Would that work, Annie? Yep. 4.15 p.m. Um, Board of Health is at 6, so we'll just have to keep in mind we're going to be, um, we'll probably want to be off the lines by 5.30 for them, um, but I think that gives us a good time for discussion. That's plenty of time. So what is the date and everything again? May 11th? Monday, May 11th. At 4 o'clock, 4.15? What is 4.15, yes. Nice. That's good. Okay. All right. So I will make the agenda and I'll send out a reminder. Um, so now Farmer's Market will be all set for Monday, May 4th to go to board. Um, here tonight, is there any other discussion or are we looking to close the meeting? Um, if there's no other discussion, then I will make a motion to close the meeting at 5.14 p.m. I second. Lisa, second. Okay, any discussion? Um, I will roll call one final time. So Lisa? Yes. Oh, sorry, all in favor, Lisa? Yes. Kerry? Kerry, yes. Sandra? Yes. Mary? Yes. And myself, Annie. All right. And while we have Caitlin on the line, thank you very much for joining us. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, and yes. Carrie, I apologize about the minutes. Can you send me your email? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank right. you. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye.